सेल्फ रेगुलेशन इन इंडिया इज अ नॉन एक्सिस्टिंग वर्ड इट्स अ नॉन एक्सिस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट देर इज नॉट अ सिंगल बॉडी दैट कैन बी ट्रस्टेड टू रेगुलेट इट सेल्फ टू द इमरजेंसी इरा द हाई कोर्ट वॉज टूथलेस नो बडी वॉज अरेस्टेड नो बडी वॉज कन्विक्टेड वाई डजन द कांग्रेस से दैट द बीजेपी इज करप्ट बिकॉज द कांग्रेस हैज ऑल्सो बीन कन्विक्टेड दिस इज गुड इवनिंग थैंक यू वेरी मच इट्स अ रियल प्लेजर एंड ऑनर एंड आई I thank the organizers for inviting me and Sai and everyone else. A real pleasure. And Shalini, the moderator. Um, it's an absolutely uh, wonderful auditorium as well. And I've, it's a. Uh, I'm walking the hallowed portals of SRCC after 34 years. Um, it's really remarkable. I came here in 1989, but then uh, my uh, board aggregate wasn't 100%. So I. Join the next best college, which is Saint Stephen's College. Uh, <laughs> yes, and uh, although although we have a <laughs> debate here on that, but um, in the in the lovely spirit of the debate, and um, in that sense, I think we all owe a lot to uh, Money, his wonderful self-deprecating style, and you know, a little bit of sarcasm and bite and everything that goes on in debates. um it's wonderful to uh, to have that in this debate as well and just a small anecdote of how we are all children of money in one sense i didn't mean to give away his age by saying that um he doesn't look a day older than 95 but uh, <laughs> at the alumni meet in st stephen's college um, the one preceding him was uh, ex foreign minister natwar singh and he he got very um, uh, soggy eyed and he wrote in the register that everything i am today i owe it to this college and then he went away and money followed him and then money scribbled underneath what natwar had written why blame the college <laughs> so that's but uh, coming swiftly uh, back to the topic of the debate i have to say this in the spirit that uh, i am sure the other side would accept gracefully is that even a drunk acupuncturist deliver less pain per square inch than the arguments that we've heard so far from the other side uh the the reason for that is and abhi to sai bhi baki hai but <laughs> the reason for that is which world are we living in I mean it's just shocking because this is the world of social media. You can't fool anyone now, especially the younger generation. I mean it's just and let me start off by saying that we we believe what we see. But unfortunately what we see is increasingly being written by people who see what they believe. And that is what the media is. They are seeing what they believe. journalism is justice delivered without the courts it is a public good it is as important as delivering justice and i am stating the obvious here but the the tragedy is that most of the journalists that you see are busy peddling narratives they have become activists they are not balanced anymore they are not objective anymore even in science that the moderator talked about covid and i say please do not bring politics into science because all then you would end up with this political science but the the and there's nothing wrong in that but let i mean there are a dozen i don't know how much time we have uh, whatever x time i have i'll take 30 seconds more than that but uh, the fact of the matter is i can bust a dozen narratives fake narratives over the last 8 years that have been peddled and sai can uh, maybe Uh, bust a, a dozen more narratives <laughs> but it's it tiresome after a while because then you are left asking what is the journalist job if the reader if the viewer is there to bust the narratives i mean let let me take what what the other side and i just mean other side as a rhetorical thing that we are all the same we are all on the same side right but at least in this debate they let me pick up the two issues that they talked of money talked about bbc talked about bofors and he talked about how 
uh, well meaning and gracious the government was i mean i don't need to open that pandora's box i don't need to tell you how much stress and how much draconian measures were put under chitra subramanyam when she was doing the story of bofors by rajiv gandhi and the pmo i don't need to tell you when money talks about the bbc and saying we didn't ban the bbc film right you didn't ban the film you banned the bbc for 2 years and it wasn't it wasn't under the emergency it was before the emergency 2 years so and this is the problem with journalism it somehow over the last 8 years it is giving the impression that everything bad that is happening in this country is happening for the first time that before 2014 india was a garden of eden everything was perfect and then we had this cambrian explosion that everything that could go wrong except for a nuclear explosion which we don't even know maybe some newspaper would report a nuclear explosion has also happened but everything that could go wrong has gone wrong let me pick up the other thing that mr kulkarni talk of he his exact expression was lights are dimming honestly they seem pretty bright to me out here <laughs> democracy is under threat democracy are babre democracy is under threat this is ridiculous and i'll i'll prove it and this is the last um, uh, fake narrative that i i'm going to bust and before i pass it on to sai this democracy is under threat everything the the biggest test of a functioning democracy and my good friend salman would agree because he is he is in the court he is an eminent lawyer are two things the independence of the supreme court and the independence of the chief election commission other than these two things everything else is at the mercy of our constitution and i put it to you i don't know what will happen to me once i say this that we have been a banana republic ever since we became a republic our constitution our constitution does not respect freedom of speech and expression period and whatever little it did was then soon trampled within a few years by nehru's first amendment i'll come to that in a minute chacha ji ki baat karunga abhi the the fact of the matter is that all those who say democracy is dead lights are dimming and everything is happening for the first time this assault on democracy sedition charges anti national do they even know that under the upa and i'm not talking of indira gandhi emergency and you know one doesn't need to go as far as far back as that let's go back only 8 or 9 years under the upa it filed 12000 sedition charges on activists Eight and a half thousand on the same day, and the then Home Minister, Mr. Chidambaram, yes, when he was asked why are you doing this, he said, and I quote him, "These are all anti-nationals. आपके anti-national, anti-national, और आज के जो चल रहे हैं anti-national उसका क्या? There are so many other examples like that, and what does it even need to go back to the UPA days? Chhattisgarh government, Congress ruled government." they slapped a sedition charge on a person who complained of a blackout a power cut they filed a sedition charge under him so many things are happening right now in congress ruled states but democracy is flourishing there in bengal a non bjp ruled state a chemistry professor shared a cartoon of mamata banerji he was arrested two week ago this news we don't even know because the telegraph is all very prim and proper and doesn't want to go against mamata he was acquitted after 11 years a chemistry professor 11 years democracy is flourishing is flourishing in bengal so you know when we are this selective we need to answer ourselves more than we can answer the public because journalism is a public good and last couple of minutes i want to take because this narrative really has to be busted we all believe and we know that yes rajiv gandhi banned a few things he wasn't really liberal the paragon of liberty and equality and fraternity indira gandhi of course brought in the emergency a lot of things that this government has done is also draconian and i have i have a list of that this government for example the bjp government in gujarat it jailed an editor for 15 days because he criticized the covid uh, response of the then chief minister of gujarat 
So yes, all these things are happening. In fact, the most iconic phrase in the last 10 years that has been coined has been by Mr. Arun Shori when he says that all the BJP is is Congress plus cow. And AAP, AAP of course is Congress plus Lamao, L-M-A-O, but that's another matter. BJP is no different from the Congress. Please realize this. Everything that the BJP is doing right now, everything wrong and everything right, the Congress has done it before. <laughs> There's nothing, there is no, and uh, you talk of corruption, the B I say BJP is corrupt. You know why? Because the High Court convicted the BJP of taking illegal money and violating the FCRA rules. The punishment for that is five years imprisonment of the party head. Mr. Nadda would be rotting in Tihar right now. But what happened? The mistake that the court did was that the court also convicted rightly the Congress party. Ab ye BJP or Congress dono milke retrospectively they amended the FCRA Act going back to the emergency era. The high court was toothless. Nobody was arrested. Nobody was convicted. Why doesn't the Congress say that the BJP is corrupt? Because the Congress has also been convicted. This is the problem in this country. <laughs> Nobody tells you these facts. People only tell you one-sided stories like, for example, that Nehru was the paragon of liberty and freedom. Everything else, Indira Gandhi might have done emergency, you know, but Nehru, no. Chacha Nehru didn't. Let me take the next couple of minutes and tell you what the, the status of freedom of speech and expression un, under Pandit Nehru was. Under Jawaharlal Nehru, the first amendment was brought in. Reasonable restrictions, incitement, disruption of public order. Who decides who is disrupting public order through freedom of speech? Poet Majru Sultanpuri was jailed for one year for calling Nehru Hitler ka chela. One year. One of our greatest songwriters and poets brought it in jail. Did you know that? First democratically elected com communist government in Kerala was dismissed. Congress president said communist parties wouldn't be allowed to participate in general elections. Stanley Wupert's book Nine Hours to Rama was banned. The book Chandra Mohini was banned. Audrey Menon's De Ramayana was banned. Campbell's The Heart of India was banned. Kostler's The Lotus and the Robot was banned. Import of any newspaper that undermined friendly relations. No, I need to go on. I need to go on because this rubbish fake narrative needs to be busted right here and right now. Flister's Aisha was banned. Bertrand Russell's Unarmed Victory was banned. Robson's film Nine Hours to Rama was banned. Sadhani's Markane Somnath was banned. Robert Taylor's The Dark Urge was banned. Selling Lady Chatelier's Lover was banned. The book What Has Religion Done for Mankind was banned. Ratnavak's Bhupat Singh was banned. Import of any obscene drawing or painting was banned. Mrinal Sen's film Neel Akshar Nietzsche was banned. Menon's Rama Retold was banned. Tony Hagen's book Nepal was banned. The RSS organizer was censored. Its publishers prosecuted. Film Gokur Shankar was banned. Godse's testimony was banned. Goswami's film Rumi was banned. Historian Dharampal was jailed and criticized for Nehru for Indochina war. Releasing the film 1962 war film Bhul Na Jana was blocked. Pandit Rajinder Prasad's speech was barred from distribution. Film Jharna was banned. Draconian press objectionable ban was passed. Columnist Vivek was fired. His column critical of Nehru discontinued. HT editor Durga Das was fired. His column critical of the Nehru family discontinued. Congress leaders demanding Nehru's resignation were arrested and jailed. Ads to Times of India was discontinued for speaking against government policy. Magazine Crossroads was banned. Play Nigame Communistike was banned. Its actors arrested. Hindi film songs were banned from being played in the AIR. Congress demanded a ban on iconic film Parasakti. Film Nastik was banned. Wupert Pop Music was banned from AIR. People's Theatre Association was banned. Play Hariganath Master was banned. Film Ganga Jamna was blocked. Sarat Chandra Chattopadhyay's play Mahesh was banned. Tagore's play Gora was banned. Balraj Sani's play Jadu Ki Kursi was banned. Tagore's play Bharat Sarajan was banned. Paradeep film song was deleted. Two songs from Fifth Subo Hogi were banned. Harmonium was banned. This is Jawal Lal Nehru. The paragon of freedom of speech and liberty. Is there anything left to be said? If it is, I pass it on to Sai. This is the Sri Ram College, right? Yeah. 
जय श्री राम राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक्स टू दी ऑर्गेनाइजर्स फॉर पुटिंग टुगेदर सच अ फैंटास्टिक इवेंट एंड द ऑडियंस फॉर टर्निंग अप इन सच ब्रिलियंट नंबर्स एज यूजल आई थिंक दलीज हैव बीन कन्वर्ट टू दईल्स हैव बीन कन्वर्ट इन टू पाठशालास थैंक यू सो वेरी मच you know i was wondering i was just going through the email that was sent to us on the topic <laughs> <laughs> the topic was can western narratives and indian narratives or western media and indian media coexist if i were on the other side i would have stuck to the topic <laughs> this is a textbook instance of our bell mujemar you've opened the pandora's box by speaking about freedom of speech when instead the topic was slightly different good can of worms has been opened so let the flood gates open <laughs> now we are being told that free speech in this country is almost on the verge of extinction so anand rightly pointed out the first amendment to the constitution so i'll explain the backdrop to it so mr nehru seriously was interested in pushing his land reforms agenda i am not on the question of whether it was right or wrong i'm just saying that he had a certain policy initiative which he wanted pushed you know who was actually raising the red flags to his initiative the ones who raised the red flag always the communists okay so people like romesh thapar started writing against it and there was active opposition to everything that he was doing courts were overturning his judgments or rather his his initiatives through judgments so two consequences happen simultaneously around that particular period which till date affect the constitution the first is the introduction of severe limitations on free speech the second is the introduction of the ninth schedule to the constitution which effectively protects all those land reform legislations from any kind of constitutional challenge imagine an elected government in a democracy taking a policy decision and ensuring that that policy decision is immune from judicial review through a constitutional amendment for all time to come and we are being taught democracy by the scions and descendants of this legacy second today we are suddenly being told oh social media explosion is the reason for survival of free speech in this country otherwise you see free speech has been bought by mercantile interests and so on and so forth who introduced section 66a to gag free speech on social media section 66a of the information technology act was introduced by the upa government with the broadest of possible restrictions on free speech where even any kind of offense or hurt that is caused to sentiments immediately attracts the application of that particular section this is what ultimately resulted in shreya singhal versus union of india the sad part or the unfortunate part or perhaps the cynical part of the reality is the bjp defended that particular provision in court when the matter was being heard because by then the bjp had taken over so what does this tell you ultimately that the nature of power regardless of which party is in power is to appropriate as much space to it as possible and limit the scope for free speech there is really no one in this hammam i leave it at that who is capable of saying i am clothed okay so therefore let's not take a moral high ground here let's be realistic about what is it that we want and what is it that is good in the interest of the public let's speak of that now let's talk about what's happening in the west so on and so forth i think the binary division between western media and indian media no longer exists for a good reason because it's not a question of who's from the west and who's from india it's a question for who's batting for indian interests that is what ultimately matters because there are several people several journalists in the west who are willing to speak the truth about bharat and who do not share the colonial cynicism of the rest of their western compatriots similarly there are several people from bharat who are more than happy to be lackeys of anti indian mouthpieces from the west that's a fact so therefore i am not interested in this binary argument anymore 
During COVID, there were several fantastic Twitter handles from the West which were actually reporting on the kind of measures that a country such as Bharat, the scale of its population, was undertaking to provide resources to its people, while people within were constantly pulling us down. Now here is the interesting part. Mr. Kulkarni rightly points out, and I would say significantly that holds good, that Western media, including Hollywood, so to speak, has managed to push the Western agenda as much as possible. It's unfortunate that we are aping everything wrong from the West, aspect, but we are not doing it as far as this issue is concerned. And then when we say that there are certain portions of the media, there are certain segments of the media, who seem to be comfortable constantly pulling India down, we are then accused of being anti-free speech. Okay? So we are being told that free speech is effectively under challenge because mercantile interests are holding them to ransom. Why don't we speak of political parties owning channels? In the South, business interests and media interests merge and they are controlled by parties. You want a standing example? The Sun Group owned by the DMK which has been a partner, not just to the Congress, but also to the BJP. Because after all, the Commerce Minister during Mr. Vajpayee's tenure, who was leading India in the Doha negotiations with respect to World Trade Organization, was Murasoli Maran from DMK. Neither party deemed it fit to crack down on the holding of media interests by political interests or political organizations. That has never happened. Why just the DMK? Jayalalitha also owned Jaya TV, which continues to be run by the ADMK. I would say it's much better for a mercantile interest to own, a, let's say, a media organization as opposed to a political interest because there's a serious conflict of interest on both sides. That's a discussion that we don't seem to be having here. Now, Ghoom Phirke Abhi Baad Johit has become about only the Congress and the BJP. I would say at this point, Members who are listening to this should actually say we are sick and tired of this nonsense. We'd like to actually have a discussion which goes beyond the BJP and the Congress. And we'd like to talk. Because until the cows come home, this battle will go on. But nevertheless, given the fact, the cow, of course, pun intended, given the fact that the Congress has been in power for a longer period of time, ask any student of constitutional law. Almost every decision on free speech involves a clampdown on free speech by Congress ruled governments either at the state or the center. So at the very least, the Congress must take a look at its own history before it starts pontificating to the rest. And you're certainly in no position to pontificate today when all the information is out in the public domain through the social media. People have access to judgments, people have access to decisions, file noting, so on and so forth. You're in no position to pontificate. To ape him 30 seconds. Yes? So I would only request you to ask yourself only one thing. Self-regulation in India is a non-existing word. It's a non-existing concept. There's not a single body that can be trusted to regulate itself. I say this as much of the judiciary when it comes to its collegium system, and I say this as much of the media. Now, on the point that Mr. Kulkarni raised, that the government is thinking of setting up a center which can crack down on fake news. The press guild does nothing. The press council of India does nothing. No action has been taken against any organization or any portal or let's say individual journalist for their direct role in let's say spreading or manufacturing fake news. What are we supposed to do? You can't go to a court asking for directions against a private party in a writ petition. So what do you do then? The government has the task. You know why? Because if fake news starts on WhatsApp, particularly in the context of riots or any kind of communal violence, so to speak, and, and let's assume that the trigger is a lie, it falls upon the government to have a mechanism to actually trace that lie back and also perhaps nip it at the bud. So if the government were to actually go against all kinds of news, that's a different issue. But to say that the government doesn't even have the right to go after fake news when self-regulation as a concept is completely failed in this country, I'm sorry to say, what are we really batting for? This is exactly what happens when you choose to go after every policy initiative merely because it's the BJP at the helm or the Congress at the helm without asking what is right and what is wrong. I can pander to the gallery here by reducing this to a television debate, but this is SRCC. I think you're better, right? And therefore, and therefore, I would urge you 
to put pressure on debaters and panelists to stick to the issue, at least in their own interest.